Hi students, I know many of you have trouble with this formula. Um, I don't blame you because it's not a straightforward one, it's quite tricky. And that's why I'm making a video to help you understand this. It all starts from here. Work done is equals to F times S. So a force F applied uh, through a distance S can do work on an object. If this is a constant force, then the work will be done at a constant rate. The stronger the force, the steeper the graph. So the gradient of this graph, or what we call the energy gradient, corresponds to the force F. Joules per meter is a kind of force. Now, if it's potential energy that we're talking about, then we're always talking about an external force that's doing positive work to increase the potential energy. And the external force is always trying to overcome some hidden force, uh, what we call the field force. So if we are talking about gravitational potential energy, then we are talking about the gravitational force here. If you are talking about electrical potential energy, then it's the electric force that the external force must work against. So if it's about potential energy, then the energy gradient is the external force. But the external force is always in opposite direction to the field force. So the negative of the potential gradient is equal to the field force. Let's write out the equations. Huh? So the potential energy comes from the external force doing positive work on the object. So U is external force times S. But the external force and the field force are always um, equal but opposite to each other. So the external force is actually the negative of the field force. So the potential gradient, the potential energy gradient, which is du ds, is actually the external force. So the negative of the potential energy gradient will be the field force. Ta-da! Got it? Well, if you understand already, then actually you don't need to watch this video because you are such a genius. But for most students, you will probably need a few examples. Okay, let's use a GPE as an example. If you want to move a mass to a higher position, you have to exert an upward external force. Why? Le? Because you have to overcome the hidden force, the downward gravitational pull. In fact, the external force must match the gravitational pull exactly. If you were to move the mass, without uh, gaining any speed. You don't want it to gain any Ke because you want the work done by the external force to all go into the increase in GPE. Since it's a constant external force, it's going to do work at a constant rate. So the GPE graph, when plotted against distance, height, h, is going to be a straight line graph. So what does the gradient of this uh, graph uh, give you? What does the energy gradient correspond to? It's the external force, which is equal to mg. And the negative of the energy gradient would correspond to the field force, the gravitational pull, which is mg also. The negative sign is just telling us that the gravitational pull is downward. There is an important pattern that you must spot. Look here. Huh? The external force is always pointing towards higher potential energy. Because positive work done by the external force increase your potential energy. That's why the external force always point towards higher potential energy. 
And the field force, which is a gravitational pull in this case, is always pointing in the opposite direction. The field force is always trying to pull you towards a lower potential energy. And you can see the same thing on the graph as well. So, for example, if you're currently here, then to increase your GPE, you have to be moved rightward. So the external force is rightward. So the field force must be pointing in opposite direction, leftward. The field force is pointing where your potential energy is going to be lower. Let's use another example. We'll use the example of elastic potential energy. So this is the spring in its uh, natural length, in its unstretched length. If you want to increase the elastic potential energy in the spring, you need to exert a rightward external force. Why? Le? Because there is the hidden field force, the spring force, which is uh, leftward. If the spring obeys Hooke's law, then the external force will also be proportional to the extension of the spring. Meaning as the string is stretched, the external force must also increase so that it exactly compensates for the leftward spring force. This is so that you are stretching the spring without the spring gaining or losing Ke. Since the external force is proportional to x, then the work done by the external force will increase quadratically. So all this work done goes into the elastic potential energy, which we know is half kx squared. So what does the energy gradients of this graph correspond to? Is the external force or kx. And it's the negative potential energy gradient that gives you the spring force. The negative sign here is just telling us that the spring force is leftward. Again, notice the pattern. The external force is always pointing in the direction of higher EPE. It should make sense to you because to increase the EPE, the external force and the displacement must be in the same direction. The spring force, on the other hand, is always trying to pull you towards lower elastic potential energy. Likewise, on the graph, if you're currently at this point, then to increase the EPE, you have to move rightward where the EPE is higher. So the external force is rightward. And the spring force has got to be leftward because it's trying to pull you uh, to the left side where the EP is lower. Let's move on to a more complicated scenario. So this graph here shows you the variation of the GP of a spacecraft at different positions between the Earth and the Moon. So this graph here shows you the total GPE of the spacecraft. It shows you the GP stored between the spacecraft and the Earth and the GP stored between the spacecraft and the Moon. So it's the total GP we are looking at. So the gradients of this graph will tell us the resultant gravitational pull. Let's suppose that the spacecraft is currently at this position. So currently it has um, this much GPE. If you want to increase the GP of this spacecraft, you have to move it rightward. See? On the right side, you have higher GPE. So the external force has got to be directed rightward, which means the hidden force, the field force, the gravitational pull has got to be leftward because the gravitational pull always tries to pull you towards a lower GPE. So when a spacecraft is at this position, it's experiencing a leftward gravitational pull. Basically, the gravitational pull by the Earth is stronger than the
the gravitational pull by the moon. That's why the resultant gravitational pull is a leftward force. What if the spacecraft is somewhere here? So currently, you have this much uh, GPE. This time round, if you want to increase the GPE of the spacecraft, you will not be pulling it rightward because then you end up pulling it to even lower GPE. When you are here, to increase your GPE, you have to go leftward. So the external force has to be leftward. Which means the hidden force, the force that your external force has to work against, is rightward. Basically, at this position, the rightward pull of the moon is stronger than the leftward pull of the, of the Earth. That's why the resultant gravitational pull is rightward. What if the spacecraft is here, which uh, puts you at this point on the graph? So this is the maximum point where the energy gradient is zero. What does that mean? It means that at this point, the gravitational pull is actually zero. The leftward pull of the Earth is exactly matched by the rightward pull of the Moon. So I hope uh, you got the idea um, how we can obtain information about the field force when we are given the potential energy graph. Oh, by the way, uh, if it's the magnitude of the resultant force that you are interested in, um, it's all about the steepness of the graph. It's all about the steepness of the graph. That's why um, I drew this force stronger here than here, because it's a steeper energy gradient here than here. Wow, that's a lot of work. Um, I hope um, you find this video useful. That's all. Ta-ta!